Hello. <laughs> Hi, I'm Shirley. Uh, thank you so much for joining. And today we have Mike with us. Mike, I actually just realized. Hi, everyone. Oh my God. I forgot to mute the. <laughs> Hi, sorry. I'm Shirley. I forgot to mute the playback. <laughs> that was embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mike, I actually realized. I don't know how to pronounce your last name. Um, it's Bronbier. Um, Bron Whoa. But, but yeah, it, uh, but my Danish cousins will always say that I'm, I'm, I say it wrong as well. So yeah, I, I don't know. Oh. Bron beer apparently, but um, but it's much more. I don't know. Guttural, I'm, I'm guttural, so though. glad I asked you yeah. to, because <laughs> I was gonna say like Brondenburg. Bronberg, yeah, most people say Bromberg, and that's fine. I, I, you know, like I've grown up responding to any, anything, so might might be. Um, yeah, thank you. M might come in more to the frame. <laughs> okay. Yeah, thank you so much, Mike, for agreeing to do this. I'm really, really excited. And if, I don't know if you can tell, but um, I'm coming down with something. So I'm like very <laughs> sniffly. And apparently Mike is also oh, kind of... Yeah, yes, I'm, I'm actually. Moving away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, and Mike is apparently also a little bit sniffly. And, yeah. and apparently this is the true summertime British experience, yeah, is absolutely. what you just we, said. We, we have tissues. In and, preparation. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, yeah, we're all you know looking forward to sniveling through the, the British summertime. Yes. <laughs> also, um, there's some beautiful artwork in the background of what you guys have done in the past. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know if you can see that. So that's um, Valentina and Miriam's uh, um, oddity viz work and some prints we did uh, recently from our own project. Um, and uh, if anyone's coming to Reasons, I might have some to give away in our in our in my talk late, later this week. So you know, freebies. Yay. <laughs> and as usual, uh, please um, feel free to leave any questions in the chat, and then we're gonna get started. Kind of. Um, so the first thing we want to do is like go through your portfolio because it's just so beautiful <laughs> <laughs> and amazing and really inspiring. And. Thank uh, you. And the second thing I want to do is uh, the reason, oh, oops, okay, so that thing, that thing, I actually need this thing over here. Wait, go down, okay. <laughs> um, and the thing, the second thing I'm really excited about is to learn um, from you how to do these beautiful things. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. Okay, so, oh, I see what's happening. Yeah, got you. Um, okay, so yeah, um, we we are currently in uh, Culture Designs HQ, which is also a little studio on the side of our house um, <laughs> in, in rural East Sussex. Um, Thank so, you for having me. No here. worries, no, it's brilliant. Nice it's beautiful. Sunday. If, if if my daughter runs past at any point, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll put her on screen. Um, but um, yeah, so um, so Polly and I uh, run a little run this little studio, um, and it's a you know we do design stuff mostly with data um, in some form or another um, and kind of generative data art kind of stuff um, and uh, yeah so this is our site um, culture.design and oh, and the other way, oh, the other way yeah. <laughs> See, new... people have problem with my scrolling <laughs> um, so yeah so okay I guess the kind of projects we work on um, where should we um, I think the first one I saw from you might have been. Well, I actually saw your work because of Valentina, okay, the space yeah. also the space Odyssey. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, yeah. Okay. Oh, so, that. That. so yeah, this was a, a project we did with Valentina and Miriam, uh, Valentina De Filippo and Miriam Quick, um, and basically uh, they were the totally the brains behind this, um, and these were Valentina's, Valentina's amazing. Um, visualizations of David Bowie's um, Space Holiday. Um, and it was a year after uh, Bowie's death um, and they wanted to do, make an event um, to, as a tribute to, to, to David Bowie. So it, it, on the, the anniversary we put this, uh, well they put this kind of um, exhibition on at Wyden and Kennedy um, and um, yeah so what our involvement with that was um, basically animating one of um, Valentina's visualizations and what if I run that, let's see if I can broadcast And it should have the sound also, right? Excellent. So so this is um uh, Od yeah, uh, Space Od Odyssey and what you can see um being shown here is basically we're showing the as each 
each bar goes past, um, we're showing which, which instruments are playing. So in the, on the inside track is the acoustic guitar, you can see that playing, and then the drums are playing there. Well, we've got a few different visualizations, of, you know, uh, or different angles on the on the visualization. So this is using the same system, reading the same data in, and moving the icons in the same way, but just on a different layout, if you like, you know, sort of just arrange those icons instead of around the around this sort of circular ring you can see behind us this is just like in a kind of a time tunnel kind of uh, disappearing into, into the space void um so you can see um um yeah so and what we also used was each we had the audio from each track so the, the guitar track and the drums track and the vocal tracks and so so not only are we sort of displaying what which bars are playing of, of which instruments are playing in that bar, but we're also showing we're moving those icons based on the, the, the level of the sound of each track. Yes. So, so they're all kind of dancing around. You know, it's so um, fun. Yeah. <laughs> so, and the, the way we did it was, was basically um, taking Miriam's spreadsheet of, of, of data, um, uh, which she um, she analysed the, the, the song in so many different ways. And Miriam's a, a music PhD um, before she was a an analyst um, or sort of data, you know, data researcher or researcher. Um, so she was the perfect person for, for the job of, of, of looking at um, yeah. uh, space oddity. Um, oh, this is so fun. <laughs> so it's nice as you see that the, 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 yeah, as you get a bit more a bit more of a view on it, you can see these kind of, the drums sort of rippling through and then it drops. Oh, then it cuts out, but yeah, but then you get these nice ripples as it, as it moves through. So, so fairly simple in terms of visualisation, it's kind of sound reactive visualisation. But, um, it's so satisfying. But it's, it's nice to do it alongside all of the prints and, and everything mm. for that, that exhibition. And, and um, Valentina did some other After Effects type stuff as well, which, we, which uh, was cut in, with our stuff was cut in. I think there's a, there's a portrait we did of Bowie as well somewhere, might be at the end. But you, you can see us cut, cutting between different um, sort of camera angles, if you like, um, and it's basically that's like a lot of 3D programs. You can you can build a model, um, but then move the camera to view it from different angles. And it's the same process. So um, so and because everything is synchronised to the music or to the data, the, the music data um, and the, the sound data, every time we shoot it from a different angle, we, and we can cut between those angles, and everything is in sync. So you just yeah. out, output one view of the whole song and output another view of the whole song and then basically an After Effects or Premiere you can bring it all together in a kind of, like a multi-camera composition. I see it. Yeah, so, and then, yeah, so then we fade out to a, a Bowie oh. portrait, which probably by the time we've streamed it onto Twitch is not going to make a lot of sense. It's lots of little points that make, <laughs> make up David Bowie's um, uh, portrait. But it's like a 3D, so it's kind of like a depth map. So we took his, his portrait and basically darker pixels we push further to the back and lighter pixels we bring oh, further to the front wow. so it kind of has like a point cloud kind of feel to it yeah. it's quite hard to see even on oh, no. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. but you I'm can see those to... points moving across I think, I think you can start to see it yeah, yeah. so it's subtle um, um, but yeah so that was that was that so a kind of mix of data viz and um, kind of generative portrait stuff yeah okay actually sorry um, let me also uh, really quickly answer that question from mm -hmm. Slater USA, I guess. Um, the text editor that you saw earlier, the question is, what's that text editor? And it was, just, it's a, it's a editor for processing. Um, I think this is what he was asking about. Um, yeah. Yes, yeah, probably... the, the processing IDE. Yeah. Um, so just the, I, and I use it, and a lot of people, um, it's, it's, it's the most basic text that you know, kind of. It, editing environment ever but um I, I i i quite like it but for that i think that's why i like processing generally is is its simplicity and it's very straightforward it's just straightforward yeah there's no sort of obfuscation of anything you know it's just it's straightforward but a lot of people use other editors um like um, sublime or code or whatever to yeah, yeah. and then and then you can and, and eclipse and things like that to to um to work with um and then you can there are various ways of then firing up processing to render that you know or to run that so um so that you're not in any way limited to to using that text editor, but I quite like it to be honest. The simplicity of it. So. Yeah, and then let me also do this really quickly, which is um, if at any point you are wondering about what are we, uh, what are we, what are you doing? There we go. Um, 
if you're wondering about any of the things that we're talking about or how to find like any of Mike's um, like websites and stuff, uh, you can just uh, type a uh, bang, what are you doing? Um, and then here's all of the links. Yeah. Um, okay. Wow. My nose is getting stuffier and stuffier. <laughs> I can hear it in my voice. Um, yeah. So, uh, wait. And then there was another thing I wanted to say, which is, uh, so... Um, I come from like a more D3 background, so processing mm. is completely new, which mm -hmm. is why I'm like really excited. Mm. Um, but so it seems like what you were saying about the camera angles is that um, you make different processing, I guess, projects, and then you string them together in After Effects. Is that yeah? How? So 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 processing the way the, the way we use it. I mean, you can use it as a, like an interactive. You know, if you had a uh, an installation somewhere that you don't have to output it as video at all and, and if you can if your code is fast enough you know if you're not doing things that are too too kind of intense you know processor intense um then you can just use it as, a, as an interactive tool um and obviously there's p5.js which yeah. is the kind of the, the javascript version which is 75 percent similar if you like um or it's, it's almost exactly the same except that some of the functions um, they haven't yet built, um, mm -hmm. and maybe three. And I think the last time I, I used it, three D wasn't quite up to speed. Uh -huh. But they're work. I think they're working on all of these things. And so it's it's, but it's certainly what it does do so far is is pretty good. Um, so, but yeah, in terms of how we use it a lot, is you um, you're you're basically creating a series of animation frames, whether that's two D or three D, um, and you've got different modes um, and um, and you, if, if you're in 3D, you've got a camera that you can move around to, to view those 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 objects. So even if you're just creating a cube, put a cube in the middle of the screen, mm -hmm. and then you can move the camera around that cube um, and view it from different angles, um, or a sphere, or whatever it is, those, those primitives, or using libraries like um, uh, Frederick Van Hoot's um, um, Hemish uh, is, is a great uh, 3D library that lets you um, create, you know, primitives but then sort of subdivide them and break them apart and, okay. and, and sort of manipulate those 3D meshes. So but you out of the box, you know, with processing without any libraries, you can still create spheres and cubes and that sort of stuff. Or draw in your own 3D space if you like, you know, just I'm gonna put some points deeper over there or put some points further forward. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, so then you output each frame as um, as a PNG or a you know EPS file. Uh -huh. um, so if you just want one still frame, you know that's fine for a, for a graphic. Um, you can output. I see. You can output as a PDF if you want. If you wanted then oh. to take it into Illustrator. So if, as long as everything you're doing is is vector based, you know, uh -huh. rather than a, some sort of bitmap kind of manipulation. So um, then you can output oh. as PDFs, which is great. So that means you can take your work into print or you know into more traditional design projects yeah, if you like. Yeah. So you can generate assets generatively, um, as it were, as it were. Um, but then once you're happy with that, so you can use a kind of generative design process, but then bring those assets in into, you know, a more traditional um, sort of graphic design workflow. Um, but yeah, so in terms of the, the question of, of moving, how do you make video is that you output a series of frames, still frames, and then comp oh. that together. And, and actually processing will let you, there's a function in processing to bring those still frames back in and it will turn it into a mob or an MP4 for you. Um, oh. So you can just do that. You don't even need Premiere or After Effects. Oh, you know? so, okay. So there is, some, and I, but I don't use it. I tend to just bring it straight into um, Premiere um, and then Got just it. as a series of frames. Um, and then, yeah, then do whatever post-processing you want to post. <laughs> post-processing. <laughs> Literally um, in uh, After Effects or, um, yeah, Premiere. So um, so that's the kind of the general workflow. But what's, yeah, I think that's what's nice about processing is all the different outputs you can get. From it, so it's and in terms of a workhorse, it's quite useful. Kind of. But, yeah, uh, I didn't yeah. know that. It's good to know. Do you want to show like maybe your favorite before we go into the proximity studies? Yeah. Okay. Um, so I think this is probably. Um, so this is a project called Generative Still Life, and <laughs> um, basically, I think it's the one I'm, I'm most pleased with the the outcome. Wow. From. Um, so, let's open one of these. So, what we did here is um, it was kind of at the end point of a few different projects that kind of led up to this. Uh -huh. And I did some experiments with, um, we started, started like sampling sort of colors and shapes and forms from portraits. Um, and then I sort of changed the oh. way I did that, you know, kind of like the dead president's pictures that I was, I was doing. Um, 
over here. Yes, yeah, I, see that one. I think I think you also have it in your portfolio, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so so there's, there is a a long story. <laughs> no, no. Um, so where are we? Yeah. Oh, there we go. Okay, so these portraits we started it was kind of one of my first projects in processing, um, where we use created a, basically a drawing tool to um, sort of trace and, and sample colour from underlying um, existing classical portraits, if you like. So, And these are um, presidential portraits, um, so uh, Martin Van Buren and um, Abraham Lincoln and all those guys, because they have these amazing, they're kind of iconic images. Um, and, um, but yeah, so they have these kind of really rich colour palettes. So then we... Um, <laughs> what, you, what you can't see is, is Shirley blowing her nose off, off, off camera. Uh, so then, oh, what are we doing? Oh, I have, I have no idea why that happened, but oh, uh, yeah. Okay, so then we moved on to instead of making those kind of drawing tools, we uh, made a more algorithmic version of that um, to, um, well, and we created this this portrait. That's what you use for uh, Bowie, Bowie too. It's the same sort of approach, yeah, yeah. Um, slightly slightly different, but basically the same thing of, of sampling. Um, Sampling areas of interest in a picture, um, rather than just sort of manually drawing over, drawing triangles, um, uh, we kind of algorithmically picked out areas of, of the image that were more interesting. And so, if we could algorithmically pick out what's interesting in a portrait, it, the idea was that we could also uh, lost your mouse. Um, algorithmically pick out what's interesting in a still life. So and. What I liked, we, we started looking at these kind of um, Dutch still lives, you know, the really rich, you know, um, oil paintings that just have got such incredible, um, rich mm. colours. Um, huh? And so if I show you the original. Um, okay, so that's Ooh, the original image. Uh -huh. So we were looking for um, Dutch still lives, and it turns out this is a picture by Richard Osterland. He's, it's actually a photograph um, oh. of plastic flowers, and you can see in the bottom corner there there's a snake and that's a, like a plastic snake from the joke shop I think he said he, he got it from the, the, the local toy shop but he's managed to capture these incredible colors you know and and just these kind of um, tributes to those original Dutch still lives yeah so we did an experiment with this image and then then uh, an agency got in touch with us um, from Paris and they want they were doing an installation in China um, and said can we use your your experiment that we just put up on on, on Vimeo and but we'd use Ricard's um, image, so we talked to Ricard, and he was happy for us to use it, and we kind of um, um, teamed up on on producing a new version for that installation, which uh, which is kind of a more angular version of this, but this is what it eventually turned into. So what effectively we're doing is saying, take Ricard's picture, find out where's interesting in that, like, that, and draw some little triangles, and draw those triangles in kind of a, like a three D brush, uh -huh. so arrange them in a kind of a three D space, and then move those 3D, that 3D brush across the screen um, and zoom in on it and zoom out on it. Um, and if we play it, actually, I can sort of, it's quite, it's fairly slow moving, I reckon. So you can sort of see the brush kind of rotating, it yeah. goes, goes flat. And, it's, and what we're doing, all we're doing really is, is drawing that brush across the screen, but never clearing the screen. Yeah, so it's and it's leaving these trails. So what effectively we're doing is creating an oil painting type feel from wow. a, from an oil painting, which wasn't an oil painting; it was a photograph. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, uh, kind of. But um, what I love about this is that these are you get colours in here that you know, I would never know how to do. You, do you know what I mean? In fact, it's partly Ricard's amazing colours in his photograph, but also as they layer up and as they combine, you get these moments of. And this isn't, it's not even lit at all. There's no, it feels like there's kind of lighting on these and it's catching, yeah. um, but it's sort of lit, but it's not, it feels like a 3D model, but it's actually um, just um, just leaving marks um, as, it, as it's moving around. And so so you can sort of see that, that, that composition of his original flowers. You can sort of see some flowers yeah. in there as they're drawing, but what it leaves are these sort of abstract sort of oil type painting compositions. And um, how, did you say how it's uh, deciding to move? Like in like what? Is it just so? A, that's 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 me. Noise? No, no. So that's me saying okay, move across the screen, left or right, top left, top bottom, to, to bottom right. Um, so I have a kind of a you know just we'll just say over this many frames, move from here to here, and use you know um, and then rotate three times. 
Y oh, wow. doing that rotate around the X axis, you know, the X axis or the Y axis or the Z axis, you uh -huh. know, um, um, this many times as you go. And then you just have to kind of see what it gives you, you know, um, because until you render it out, uh -huh. sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. So, the, so um, but we also did this as a 4K, um, you know, a, a 4K resolution. So all of the still frames, so this is uh, 30 frames a second at 4K. Um, and there were gigabytes and gigabytes of images to stitch together yeah. for this, these big 4K screens uh -huh. in the, for the installation. Um, um, but it was worth it. I think you get really nice, um, high resolution images and stuff. Did you get any uh, like recordings of what that looked like and wherever you wanted to do the installation? Or um, yeah, it was it was basically a hotel lobby. Um, okay. it, yeah, so they had a kind of well, it was like a hotel bar. I think and they had kind of various 4K okay, okay. screens in the bar. Um, okay. So I've only got a very distant. Okay. Of it, yeah, yeah. yeah. So maybe, maybe um, later. Maybe but it was, like... it was nice. Yeah, it was. It was um, uh, but yeah, it's. Um, so yeah, that's one I'm pleased with. Um, and then there's the colors have like opacity and blend modes, or yeah. So no blend mode, no it's just blend opacity, opacity. Yeah, yeah. And so we're just taking those those triangles that are you know maybe forty percent opacity and layering it up and layering it up. And and each movement, so you, you're only moving a sm tiny, small increment at a time. Mm -hmm. And so you get this kind of build up of colour. Um, and um, so, yeah, where it stays for a while, it, you get a more, you get a much oh, more dense, yeah, yeah, dense amount sense. of colour. And where it moves a bit faster, oh, you I get see. some sort of looser colour. So, yeah, so right in the middle, you get some some uh, more built up colour yeah. and, um, and some really looser weird. stuff around the edge. And I just like the kind of serendipitousness of saying, I think I want you to move this many times across the screen. Mm -hmm. and and also the, just the colours, the way they build up by themselves, you know. Um, yeah. I couldn't contrive that myself, you know, I couldn't. Um, that's why I like this this approach of drawing with, you know, with code really, you know, because you get these, you set in motion these ideas, but you don't know what you're going to get. Yeah, so you know? actually that reminded me a little bit of, um, so much less pretty example, um, but I did something very similar with Canvas where it was like, oh, great. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so this is basically the data itself is uh, the Olympics, uh, the medals from the synchronized diving from last year. Yeah, yeah. But this was also just like you said, it was like, it's basically drawing like a little, um, it's, it's kind of like a circle, but with a lot of noise. So it's like a jagged, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Um, and then just layering that oh, um, really nice, yeah. many times over. And I think... How I did the colors was, um, I might have had. Oh, I think I have a gradient on it or something. I can't quite remember, but yeah, yeah. Um, I adapted somebody's code to do this. Um, so what, what's what's why are they what's dictating their movement and um, is, is that, oh, yeah, so what, the, is it a visualization of um, you know what why are they some bigger and smaller and yeah, yeah so uh, the movement itself is kind of randomized but then um. The cross section, like the width, is actually um, based on a combination of their difficulty level, which is this was like a two or something. So I think the width is um, the difficulty level, mm. and then the score. Wow, it's been a while, so I can't quite remember. <laughs> but I think oh, the score, the score, I think was like um, how complicated like the shape was. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. so like down here because it was only like. Um, oh, okay. So yeah, so the shape gets noisier and more complex. Yes. Yeah, um, based on the difficulty. Um, and yeah. because there's like a lot of things being calculated, it's quite slow. But um... <laughs> yeah, and it's, but it's nice those those kind of expressive sort of visualizations. So it's it's it. I think there's. I mean, I you know um, we do data viz stuff, um, uh, but we kind of. Do, been moving more into kind of data art and things and generative uh -huh. things, and but I think there is this nice space, and it's like you know, it, I know it, it flies, it, it flies against every you know data viz rule, but but <laughs> but it, there's this nice kind of just space where it's kind of expressive and it's giving you a gist of of, yeah. of scale and magnitude and kind of what's going on. You know, it's not, not readable. Um, do, do you know what I mean? Directly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, um, but it's where you can be, you know. No one's going to die if you can't. No, 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 <laughs> yeah, nobody's going to die. No doctor is not going to be able to read that chart properly. Do, do you know what I mean? It's like there, yeah, there, yeah. Is, there, is, there, are, there are spaces where, you know, you need to know what you're, you, where you're, 
how your money is working in your bank account, that's really important. What, what your heart rate is, <laughs> yes. you know, that's really important. But, you know, lose some more expressive stuff. You, well, it's, I'm it's, synchronized, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, nobody's going to But you get the gist, you get the kind of the idea of it, and it, it's, it's, a nice, it's a nice place to Yeah, to I would it. definitely say this is more data art than data viz. Yeah. Um, yeah, oh, I think, okay, so I think the height is uh, the, uh, the scores. So that's why, like... Um, some of them are much taller than others. And so actually, the w most interesting thing I feel like is that um, this side is the women's and this side is the men's. And mm. the reason why the men's is so much taller is because they have one extra dive. So then uh -huh. um, so then it's it's taller by quite a quite a bit. Mm. Um, mm. But even then, um, the women's and men's, like the women's try less hard dives. So that's why like even the like... Um, this topmost mm -hmm. um is is barely at the same height as the men's yeah uh -huh. um which makes sense i think it would be nice and i guess that's where you were coming from is kind of the twisting action of that it would be nice to to actually track the the, the, the physical motion yeah the and use that as the you know the way it unfurls you know um, yeah but you know Originally, I wanted it to look more like uh, ink, like okay, yeah, through yeah. water. Yeah, I could not get that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. So, so yeah, but you, you're right. Similar, very similar um, process. You're just building, yeah. building up. Yeah. Um, but you know, rubbish. If you want to, then you know, because those kind of canvas effects are nice. You know, those kind of additive sort of effects. Um, but then not great if you want to output it for print. You yeah, know, unless you're unless you're you're rendering it at, at, at large sites, which is also something you could do in processing. You can kind of do kind of off off canvas sort of rendering to a large a large Ooh. scale. So and that's that's another project we did um, uh, for Tiger Beer. Oh, I love that one. It's like a little bit different styling from the rest of your projects. I yeah, think. and I think that was that was mostly due to working with um, in combination with the. Thank you. <laughs> Can't think and scroll. Um, so, yeah, with, with the agency Habas in Dublin, um, so they kind of art directed the the icons, if you like, and we kind of worked on the the structure of the data and the way we encoded the data. Um, and the data is basically pretty much people's names um, and age and time of day, but fundamentally, it's a kind of an encoding of the letters of people's names. Um, so we kind of started coming up with these kind of structures um, of arranging. Basically, the way it works is that if we're going to we're going to map your name on concentric circles, work working from the inside out. And so, if you've got your, your name starts with A, you get one one point on a circle, and B two points on a circle, and and then it was like okay, so that gives us a way of encoding the letters of your name. Um, then what do we want to do with that? How do we make that visually interesting? So so we started kind of. Um, joining the, the points up, just mapping the points and joining mm -hmm. them up from the centre. That kind of gives a little starburst feel. Um, then this one, we started multiplying up the points. So you weren't really getting a lot of density of points. So we want to make them a bit more interesting. So then we start multiplying up those points, you know, um, so you get re repeats of the of those numbers around the clock face, if you like. And then um, changing the background circles depending on the value of the letters. So, so um, so the higher value of a letter, like a Z, would be maximum value, and A would be minimum value. So, so try working on things like that. Um, but then the, um, so then the art director at Havas um, gave us these icons. So, so each icon represents a letter, um, mm -hmm. and um, they're scaled according to the letter value. Um, and the, the the twirl is the kind of the twist is added just to sort of decoratively. Yeah. But then we eventually we were going to use that for time of day. It was going to kind of twist according to sort of the clock face. Uh -huh. But actually, that was in the end for the project is what you could use as a user to kind of kind of change your composition a little bit. So, um, so yeah. Um, but then oh, the point being high resolution. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> so it was a, a Facebook app. You know, so um, you could basically. Hook, install this on Facebook. You know, it, it, it's as an app, and you generate your own your own mm. uh, visualization, and you get a free beer. Basically, you go take this. And oh, it's, nice. a, it's a beer voucher, basically. Um, and then they sponsored the Dublin Fringe Festival, and so we did use the same algorithm to to visualize um, all the performers at the Fringe Festival, and they used those to decorate the bar and create T-shirts for the barman and data viz tote bags, which is always nice. Um, and uh, yeah, so 
but like I say, you can create the same visualization, and, and here you can see the kind of the, the real size, the real size versus the, the the composition. So we could get generate oh, wow. those as ten thousand by ten thousand pixel PNGs in processing and, and spit those out. So yeah, you don't always have to use kind of vector vector graphics necessarily because these were little PNGs that um, the agency supplied of these these because they had little gradients in and SVG ah. SVG sometimes doesn't always work brilliantly in processing. There's sometimes little little gotchas with with how you do that. Um, so in the end, it ended up being high resolution PNGs that we kind of layer on you know, like transparent PNGs that we used. Um, so yeah, um, but yeah, very different in terms of feel. Um, uh, of our usual stuff. Okay. <laughs> Shirley's still, still, still got a cold. <laughs> it's not a cold yet. I'm no, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we were going to talk about, should we talk about the proximity? Yes. I, we're like running out of... <laughs> well, yeah, no, exactly. I think we're going to have a very quick uh, run through of how to use processing. Okay. But that's cool. Okay. Um, so... This project uh, we've done most recently um, is called Proximity Studies, and basically um, the idea behind it was um, after Brexit happened, um, a, a square pusher who's an electronic artist, like kind of drum and bass um, artist, um, released a tune called, called um, MIDI Sans Frontier. So it's like you know MIDI, like a medicine Sans Frontier. So um, MIDI without borders, MIDI beyond borders. Okay. Um, MIDI uh, as in like MIDI music? as in music. MIDI. Okay, yeah. Okay, so, yeah. and he released this track and he, he uh, kind of open sourced it for people to remix. And so it was like a kind of a, uh, and, a and a kind of an ode to the EU, an ode to Brexit. It's like this, this tragic thing has happened, so we think, um, depending on your point of view. Um, <laughs> and, but what got me thinking about it was it would be nice to do a sort of a video or a sort of an animation for this, for this tune. It was a really nice tune. Um, and, so, but how do we kind of make a metaphor for for Brexit or a metaphor for structures that we live under? Do you know what I mean? And, and so, yeah, yeah. so whether it's a, a social network that we live under, these connections in our social network, or these administrative connections that we live under in the EU, or trade agreements, or whatever it is, they are kind of constructs. But when you break those constructs apart, what do you, you know? And if we abstract those into maybe just concentric circles or grids or concentric spheres, and we break those those constructs apart, how long do those those connections live? I see. And, and as they break apart, what shapes and forms do they give us? And that was kind of, so that was the idea behind uh -huh. it. And that's um, so yeah. Uh, let's quickly play that. So it ended up being a kind of a series of studies. So this is kind of a grid of points wow. that are just kind of moving, just moving. Horizontally, and then every time they get near each other, they have a they connect basically. Yeah. So, briefly, um, okay. so, so it's starting with a grid, and, and then so this is oh. kind of a particle field moving across each other. These are concentric circles um, in three D space, kind of moving apart from each other, um, and as they come back together, they kind of reconnect. Um, mm -hmm. And then, um, so we did all these kind of different um, experiments of that same idea of um, so this is. This is the one we're going to look at in a minute. So this is basically a grid of particles um, and arranged, if you didn't apply any kind of force to them at all, they would just sit in a grid and some of them, and, and they would either be in range, they would all be in range of each other or none of them would be, depending on where you set the range of it, because they're all equally spaced. But what we then did is then used noise, which is a, a kind of randomized randomizing function to move those particles around. Um, and as they come closer to each other and move apart, you get these kind of um, little clouds forming because um, because of the way noise works, um, it gives you this kind of naturalistic um, random movement. So so if for those of you who don't know about noise, um, noise was created, I think, in the 80s by Ken Perlin for Tron, I think. And it's like an Oscar winning algorithm. And they used it in the movies to basically create create clouds, I think. Um, and what it does, instead of a random function, which gives you, um, so ran, if you just use random, like in, in JavaScript or whatever, it will just give you a value here, a value here, a value here. There's no kind of continuity to be between those mm. values. But if you use noise, it gives you a continuous, a more continuous naturalistic sort of distribution uh -huh. of random values. So it's, it kind of, if you map it, it looks like a mountain range or a, or hill, rolling hills, or, um, or if you wanted to create clouds, it would create, you know, 
billowing clouds, you know, um, so it's a really handy function. Um, and to it's be able implemented to, in processing. And it's implemented in processing, yeah. And so um, I think there is a there's a JavaScript library. Um, every, every kind of okay. creative um, sort of or, or generative tool will have, every 3D tool will have some form of noise, um, um, you know, built into it where you can get it really easy. Because it is just a function that returns values back, and it's a really simple function, but it's brilliantly elegant. Um, but you can also use... There's basically one-dimensional noise and two-dimensional noise and three-dimensional noise oh. and, and n-dimensional noise as well. Uh -huh. But I don't know how to visualise that, so you know. <laughs> so if you think about kind of like um, one-dimensional noise is kind of like uh, looking at the silhouette of a landscape, or like a, of a horizon line, if you like, um, or a, a heart rate or something uh -huh. like that. That kind of two-dimensional noise is like if you look over a over a landscape. Uh -huh. So it's all or like this. In fact, is like a moving things over a grid. Three-dimensional noise will make kind of a cloud. Oh. Yeah, so as, if you took this, this arrangement, and then put layers and layers and layers and layers of that, that's three-dimensional noise, and so right. you make sort of cloud formations. Four-dimensional noise would be if you were moving that cloud maybe through time. Oh, Five, wow. Five-dimensional noise. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> color, color distribution, I suppose. You could start mapping it to that, but you start running out of ways of sort of vision, mentally, okay. mentally. But you can. Um, that, so that's how noise works, is it gives you um, random distributions in space, if you like, or, you know, in dimensions. So, so um, but yeah, it's super simple to use. I mean, you just call noise like you call random and, okay. and put some values into it, and then it returns you these nice values. Back cool. in place, so. Um, yeah, so we were going to do that in processing. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't, I don't know. So how much time have we got? We have 19 minutes. Cool. Okay. Um, I don't think we're going to code the whole thing. Um, how, does, how does it sound if, like, maybe later tonight we do the rest of it? Or um, do you have time, like, after dinner? Do you have time? I'm not sure time, and that's going to okay. be quite late, isn't it? I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, well, I think we can get. I think we can get through it. I can. Okay. If, if I show you the the completed version, I'll just sort of talk you through the cut. Okay. Yeah, and, oh, and I talk you through. It. It. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I was. I was already <laughs> ready to type. <laughs> um, fingers. <laughs> but I think that might give us the gist. I mean, I think. Okay. That let's will do that. Get that idea um, across. I'm. I'm a little bit sad that like you. You like Mike prepared a boilerplate for us. Um, we Which could, is... um, if later, you know, uh, we could sort of share the code, couldn't we? I mean, yeah, we could, yeah. So yeah, I could yeah. put it on GitHub or something. Um, so this uh, is... But yeah, so so this is our kind of boilerplate code. Um, uh, which is basically all, all it's doing is I, I have a kind of built a set of little functions that I use a lot, um, and to basically move animate something between A and B um, and over a certain amount of time and. Um, and set up a, like a particle field and stuff like that. So, um, so this was kind of a boilerplate of that. And we were going to kind of move from this into then the this version, which we just saw um, running here. Yeah. So, so um, I think with all the um, typing and uh, <laughs> that we're going to need to do. So, if I just talk you through, I'm assuming kind of. Assuming no one knows anything about processing, so I'll sort of start from the ground up. Yeah. So this code editor, obviously, as we talked about before, is is the processing IDE, um, and um, if you create a new processing, is nice because you don't have to do anything. Um, there's no scaffolding at all. There's no kind of classes you need to import or anything like that. Um, you can just get going from an empty text editor. So if we we can just draw a rectangle that is um, 10 by 10, or is at a position, pixel position, 10 by 10, and is 10 by 10 wide. And there you go, that's us drawing a rectangle. So it's x, y with height? Well, x, y with height, yeah, okay. um, I think. Um, or, it's, or it's the other way around. Um, and, and with height, x, y. Yeah, but processing has excellent uh, documentation online. Um, which actually you can, oh, there's a reference maybe. I can't remember anyway where the references are, but um, so yeah, it's as simple as that. But also, um, so but what most people you know what you really do is that processing has these two core um, functions um, called setup and draw. So uh, actually, uh, let's not do that. 
everyone's going to have to watch me badly typing. Um, so, and that's what we've got here in this tab here, basically. Um, we've got a, a, a function. So it starts with void. Um, can you see that here? Um, oh, it's, this, the, the delay is freaking me out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, yes, yeah, so we've got this function called setup, and, and we prefix it with void, and that's basically what are you returning from your mm -hmm. function. So we're returning nothing from this function, so we put void. Um, and setup is what you do once, what processing does once, and so you can see we've, we're doing things like setting up the size of our canvas um, here, um, and then... Also, if you're on a retina screen, you can set the pixel density so see. to two, uh, which is nice because you can then um, make full use of your retina screen. Setting your frame rate to 60 or 30 or 15, or whatever you want. I think it defaults to 60, so it's kind of a bit redundant. Um, color mode, um, you can do RGB by default. Um, and this is HSB, do you know about the HSB Hue color mode? saturation mode? brightness. Yeah. So oh, that was quick yeah. on <laughs> Great, pop quiz. Um, so, and what you're saying here is I want to use the HSB scale uh, color mode, um, but I also want to use a talk to that color mode, if you like, on between values of 0 and 2.5. Mm -hmm. uh, but it could be 0 and 1, or I, see. I think, or 0 and 100, because that kind of, if you're doing, you know, color on a, a scale, as a percentage, then that's a kind of a more useful scale to use. Mm -hmm. But 255 is, is the default, is RGB 255 is the default. Um, so the, then we're doing setting the background color um, to uh, black, basically, um, in HSB, so, um, uh, yeah. which doesn't really make sense because you could... And also there's kind of a shortcut in processing. If you only pass one parameter in, it will kind of repeat that. Um, mm. So you could just do that, zero, and it will assume you mean for all three channels. Um, um, and then smoothing is basically when we draw a line, make it nice and smooth rather than kind of pixelated. But that oh, that will make things run a bit slower, but oh. it will give you a nicer feel. Um, mm -hmm. So that you've got control over that. So sometimes if you're doing, if you want to sketch something out and you want to see it running fast, then turn smoothing down. Um, I see. But then when you want to render it out, turn smoothing back on again. So. Okay. Um, but it's smooth eight. Smooth eight as a, as a uh, yeah. I think it takes values of like two and four and eight or something. Oh, I think okay. maybe it's something to do with a pixel. Oh, you know, okay. kind of you know, the way it, it does the anti-aliasing on the on the. I think again, there's a good reference online <laughs> of what values that takes. But eight, I think, is the maximum. Is the most smooth. Um, so yeah, so that's set up and that only gets run once and it just establishes itself. And then you've got this other function um, called draw, and these are kind of built-in functions. So you can't you can't have your own function called setup or your own function called draw. These are kind of built-in ones. Um, and draw is what happens every is sixty times a second. Mm -hmm. And what we're doing here is we're saying um, we're Switches. setting set title to basically when we run the sketch, the title of the sketch is going to be in the window is just going to be our oh. frames per second, so you can kind of keep an eye on how fast it's running. Where does surface come from? Uh, I'm not sure. It used to be. We, I can't remember. It's in processing three now. It's called its surface, but it used to be a different reference before. So uh, is it just like a global that processing already has? Like you're not because I see that you're not importing anything. No. In yeah. And... Yeah. So yeah, it's it's going to be a built-in okay. processing um, thing. I, I all I don't use surface that for anything else other than just setting um, the frames per second okay. in, the, in the in the things. I don't really know much about that. Um, but yeah, it's a kind of a built-in thing. So I haven't imported anything. Um, so in draw, you could be doing, um, and actually, let's switch back over to that boilerplate, um, the boilerplate version. So basically, you could be drawing your rectangle in this draw function. And um, But what I tend to do is kind of do all the stuff I need to do to draw and separate it out into different functions. So okay. um, I've got a function for an animating things or kind of moving, changing the parameters. So... Um, of my animation, so um, my prog progress through an animation between naught and one, I'll be I'll be moving, or my camera position, I'll be moving, my world rotations. If I want to move the world around, you know, in the the space round, then I'll be doing that, mm -hmm. and then I go and draw my model. Is what I call what I call it. This is just me making up my own functions <laughs> here. So um, so I draw a model, um, and. But that I could just write draw a rectangle here. That would be fine. But okay. actually, I've got this. So function. okay. Yeah. So I've got this function here, and this doesn't have to live in this draw model tab. This tab. So if we look at the finder, whoops, oh, I've just done that. Um, 
and stuff. Yeah. So you can see a I processing see. sketch is kind of made up of a set of, of files. There's a main file, which is called the same as the folder it lives in, and then you've got all these other files, which are just little text files, basically. Yeah. Yeah, so, so then um, does that mean that as long as you're in this file, yeah. Oh, this is boilerplate. Yeah. And then, um, and then you have the main file. Yeah, so which is named the same as the folder. Yeah. Anything else that's in the same folder gets automatically loaded into the like they yeah. all do they do they all share? Yeah. Like, cool. So then, like, I don't have to bother with loading Imports each other. Imports or anything? Imports. No, 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 no. It just, it just it just loads them in as tabs, which also means it's great. So I've got this utility tab here which um, I've kind of bundled a load of stuff in that I use a lot and so you can just copy that utility tab you know into another sketch you know into another because processing refers to these programs as sketches uh -huh. the whole that collection of things okay. if you like is a sketch um, and it can just be one tab you can just put everything in one tab if you want that's fine um, but it, in terms of just separating out code, yeah, yeah. Um, but they're not like classes or anything like that you know they're just organizational tabs basically you know so so utility or maybe I'll copy that out because I've got things in here like when you press a key save the frame out as a PNG oh. um, when I'm um, I can every frame output the P as a PNG as well so if I'm if I'm saying if I've set do render as a variable to true it will output every frame of the animation um, and I've got math stuff. <laughs> math stuff. Um, so I've got camera rotation stuff. So um, basically, that I'll be calling these functions to sort of position the camera and and rotate around um, the world. Um, math stuff. So so yeah, actually, in this um, this particular this proximity studies thing, we were all, all, we were measuring distance a lot. So we were saying how far is this point from this point, um, and. Um, actually, Frederick Van Hoop um, and uh, Keith Peters. Um, so Frederick wrote the Hemesh library, and Keith Peters um, did a lot of flash work in, 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 in the old days and does a lot of JavaScript kind of creative coding now. Yeah. If I have problems with maths, those are the guys I go to on, on Twitter, and okay. they've been so enormously helpful. So they help me with these functions, basically, which is basically the simple function um, of taking two points and saying what is the distance within those two points. Um, and then I also, there's the second function, which is the 3D, 3D version, the 3D version, the X, Y, Z um, and coordinates and two points. So uh, yeah, so uh, thanks to them for those. Um, and also some easing functions. So, you know, um, do you know about Robert Penner's easing functions? Yeah. Um, so a lot of, uh, well, the, the, he sort of had these sort of tweening functions, and it kind of, um, I think he wrote them for Flash originally. Um, but basically, you're, you're saying, like, it, instead of moving, so easing, easing, they probably, it probably has it in D3, right? So you can say, yeah, instead yeah, of moving yeah. this point between one place and another, just going, starting, stopping, yeah. you can ease in and ease out, yeah? yeah and so yeah. that's just a, a way of converting a sort of a linear progress to a kind of a wave. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so you've got sine, easing and out, sine, and easing and out, okay, okay. And easing and out um, cosine. I just have know. never heard of Robert. Yeah, so but he, he created this sort of set of um, generic kind of, a lot of those functions that perhaps maybe D3 used as well. He kind of open sourced mm -hmm. these functions. And, um, and yeah, so, so again, taking those functions um, and using them for processing, someone has, the, I've got a link here to someone who's converted those original, Robert Penn's original tweening functions um, to processing and it's really just taking a, a a normalized input of like between zero and one and converting it to a more you know a, yeah. a slowing or, or speeding up yeah output. in d3 yeah. that works pretty much exactly the same way right. yeah excellent like, that's good because when i get back into d3 I'm gonna, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to have to come to terms with that so that's good so so yeah like utility functions like that so um that i will call in, you know throughout the sketch so um so this is the boilerplate one. So yeah, so I was going to talk about the draw model. So I'm calling this draw model function and basically all I'm doing is uh, ignore a lot of this because I didn't want to have to us to type it, but basically we've got a function here called draw a thing. Um, and it basically calls this draw a thing function and we're saying don't set, set no stroke, so don't, don't draw a line um, and set our fill color to um, oh. you, know, you know we were using HSB, so we're using so hue is being dictated to by our progress through our animation. 
So it's 255 times our progress. And Where does the animation progress come from again? Ah, well, that is over here ah. in our animate function. This is me. This is in processing. Okay, um, okay. So this is me saying, so you processing, you can just go um, frame by frame, just move me a bit, move me a bit, move me a bit. Yeah. So, um, but at some point you want to know that you're moving between one I point see. and another. So what, what I do is say, okay, so my animation wants to run over 1200 frames. Um, so, and at 60 frames a second, that's like 30 seconds. So, so I set a length of time and I say, um, set my, my anim animation frame at zero for now and my progress at zero. So I've just got these variables set up here. Mm -hmm. And then I just call, I just call this do animate function again, which is me. And I just progress the animation. Oh. Um, so do animate says the rotation. Calls. So I do my rotations. So in animate, I can say, well, move a bit, move the camera a bit, rotate a bit, and then move us on, move us on by increment this, this, this normalized progress between zero and one. Um, and that's what we're doing here. So we're saying, use my current frame um, uh, as a, you know, as a factor of um, the, the, the total frames I want to animate. And then it gives me a zip, so it lets me use tweening really easily because I can pass in, I'm this far through my animation. Basically so your T, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So passing that T value in. Um, and but it also means that we can do stuff like using that that progress through an animation as a as a multiplying factor uh -huh. and something yeah. like hue, um, and we're also going to then see. use it as an input to our noise functions. Oh, so um, uh -huh. so that's why I do that, and I, I kind of use that a lot. Um, also means that you can do stuff like instead of waiting for flash to uh, not flash card processing to catch <laughs> up um, to to kind of animate itself through frame by frame, um, you can use mouse a mouse scrubber. scrubber so i'm basically that's my own oh, oh, yeah cool. so so interaction hooray um so we've made some sort of an atari game um, <laughs> um but yeah so so that basically is moving that scrubber through the through the timeline if you like um and so it's a good way of kind of seeing how the animation is going to behave before you render it out uh -huh. you know in real time if you like um so that gives you a sense of what's going to be happening so you can see um so if I turn that back to full Wait, so that means if we turn that on for the complete one, can we do that? Yes, yeah, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> okay, so, uh, yeah, let's do that. Um, so, go on, yeah. so then so we, we go, go to animate. Yep. And then we do true. Yep. Oh, do we need to save? Oops. No, 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 you don't actually. Well, but yeah, be warned, it doesn't auto save. It's like the frustration of oh. e everyone's most frustrating thing. Um, <gasps> no. So it's kind of a bit jerky because actually it's it's running at only you can see in the window the you know where we set the surface set title to the frames per second it's yeah. only running at like twelve frames oh. a second which is quite laggy and quite slow because it's having to do a lot of neighbor near neighbor calculations. Um, so, but what it does mean is that you can kind of scrub back and forth. But you, do you know what I mean? And get a sense of yeah. what's happening with the animation before you then render it out and you think, okay, I know it's moving between the right place and the right place, and when I do render it, it's going to be nice and smooth. Got it. Yeah, and it's just so so it's abstracting away from running frame by frame and abstracting it into just a, a normalized state, if you like. And then you can use that normalized kind of value kind of, to kind of say, okay, over the duration of my animation, rotate once or ro uh -huh. rotate, you know, two pi times my yeah, animation yeah, yeah. or two pi times two times my animation. So it will, you know, so everything will be moving in 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 concert. Yeah. with the animation progress and sometimes you can then yeah as we said use that as your tweening your tweening value as well so your your easing value so that's that's me that's how i do that's how i do things yeah. nothing is you know um it's just kind of a, i guess a workflow i've kind of evolved over yeah. a few years and it seems it seems to work especially for the sort of things we do and it was the same for the oddity viz one the whole thing would unravel yes a, because I knew there was this many bars and this many you know seconds in the animation, so you could I could scrub back and forth through that and make sure everything's animating, and it it sort of maintains I guess state as well. So you can say, well, if I'm this point in the animation, then the data I'm looking at is going to be here. Uh -huh. This is the bar we're on, and this is the exact amount of audio level that's at that point because we know where we are in the song. I see. And so I can scrub forward back and forth through that and make sure everything's working. You don't have to wait for it to get there. You can just jump yes. to the point. Do you know, do you know what I mean? You know, yes. so it's, it's, it's kind of linear, linear animation, but without without the boring waiting, especially with with um, 
rendering things in 3D. And then you, if you, whatever you're doing is like more than a few minutes long. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like I've got to check that end bit again. So, so yeah, you can you can do that. Um, so that's why we kind of I, I've kind of uh, set up that. So that, that's what all this sort of boilerplate stuff is doing. Um, and are we in the boilerplate? Yeah. So we're just drawing that and. So 255 times for the hue of that, that little rectangle that's moving across, and also we're drawing a rectangle. Um, basically, um, it progresses, so it's the width of the screen yeah, times the animation, but because it, we're working in 3D, we, the, 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 the coordinate system is zero zeros in the middle of the screen. Yeah. So you, if you want to start uh, left, you have to start half, half the width of the screen off. Oh, so processing starts... Zero zero in the Only middle, in, but in three D because Only in the because 3D. that's the kind of central axis point. Oh, yeah, it, I see. it kind of wouldn't make sense if you put it off and to the left. Yes, because, because if you're moving through Z as well, it's always going to be off, off camera in the top left hand corner. So to get things dead center in, in a three D space, um, but if you're working with processing in two D, it's the usual the, Cartesian. Oh, model. and yeah. that's that's probably the same for any other three D yeah, rendering. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, I've just never you're done three D. No, no. So you're moving minus. To move to the left, you're moving minus one, minus two, minus three. To move to the right, you might plus one, up, minus one, I think, down, plus one, and then in, into Z space. So it's um, coming towards you. Coming towards you is plus, I think, and, and away is minus. Could that be wrong. Sense. Could be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Processing. Yeah, it? but yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I can never remember which Z is positive or, oh, or negative. Was that Perlin? Uh, Lemon PK says, was that Perlin? I'm guessing this is in reference the to noise. the noise. Yeah, yeah, yeah Perlin noise. Um, and it's just a pro processing has an implementation of, of uh, Perlin noise. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think there's a, there's another noise, simplex noise, which I think is, I think some people prefer, um, which processing doesn't have, I don't think. Um, uh, it, it generates noise slightly differently, I think. Um, I'm not sure exactly what the difference is. But there's a, there's a JavaScript version of, of both of those, I think, that you could use. Um, <laughs> yeah, everyone loves Perlin noise. It's, it's like I, I think someone on Twitter a few days ago said what what um, what what are really common like generative algorithms that people use, and it's like well, Perlin noise for a start. You know, you know like in databases, everyone you know what is that kind of everyone does a Voronoi diagram at some point. You know, yeah. it's like, well, noise is kind force of force layout. Yeah, yeah, yeah force layout exactly. And it's like well, noise is kind of one of those basic building blocks, but it's it is really handy because it's it's randomization it's natural but it's also um, um, deterministic so it's not actually so if you seed it with the same value that noise function mm -hmm. it will always give you the same value back oh, yeah. okay. if you move through the noise function at a certain um, um, at a certain point to a certain point through that if you put the same value in it'll, if you've seeded it the same it'll give uh -huh. you the same value back Oh, um, okay. Which is which that's is really great, great actually, yeah. because you don't have to record that. If you see and if you make an animation, um, you don't have to record those values. Or next time it runs, it's completely different. You can just seed it, and that's actually what we've done here. You can see this noise seed value here. Um, in our draw, we set it to one arbitrarily. One, it could be a hundred, two. And three, again, yeah. sorry, uh, I just want to make sure, like, I know which ones are processing mm. functions and variables, and which ones are yours. So is that that's the that's a processing one, yeah. Okay. Oh, and you also mentioned that we were gonna go through loading in a lib in a processing library. Yeah, we don't need it for this. So okay. um, and we've uh, yeah, we're running out of time, aren't we? So. I think it's almost one. Uh, <laughs> I love it because I legit was scrolling through the shoes and saw the preview that looked like Perlin and I was like, oh, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well spotted. Yeah, yeah, good, 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 <laughs> good eyes on, on the algorithm there. Yeah, yeah, no, it's kind of a, it's a kind of a, a, a standard kind of not Perlin noise field. Um, but it was kind of interesting to see not just the movement of those points, but then the, the connections that they, they form between them. As, but yeah, it's nothing revolutionary about it in that sense at all. Yeah. I guess we need to start wrapping up, unfortunately. But I think what I might do yeah. is on my own sometime go through your code, um, and then yeah, yeah. I guess or, I'll or we will have some time, I guess, in the week. Um, yeah. So we're minutes. gonna be we're gonna be at the same conference together. Um, which I'm really excited <laughs> about because I've never been to Reasons 2. Yeah, it's excellent. Um, and in Brighton, and it used to be Flash on the Beach, and then um, John um, renamed it to Reasons to be Creative, and now it's just Reasons 2. And yeah, Brighton, it's just a, a lovely place to spend yeah. three days. Yeah.
Yeah, not coworkers, um, but we do the same thing or very similar things. I do data visualization. Um, Mike also does data visualization, data art, generative art. Um, and I just so happened to be passing by your studio. Yeah, on the way uh, from London down to Brighton. Yeah. Like, we, we are kind of halfway along. So. so I'm just hanging out here for the yeah. afternoon. We're going to go to Brighton together for the conference. But yeah, later in the week, maybe we can like, um, it's Robert. Hello. Hi, Robert. Uh, oh, I'm so glad you caught it. Uh, yeah, it's like I guess afternoon over there. It's Robert Monfera. Yeah. Do you know Robert? Um, uh, from Twitter. Um, I think yeah. So yeah. I think we follow each other on Twitter. So hello, yeah. nice to meet you. Um, I don't think I've actually met Robert in person either. No, I don't. I haven't. Um, but yeah. Uh, so I guess we'll try and do the rest <laughs> sometime later this <laughs> phase, week. Phase two. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah. But if not, I, can, I guess we can put the code. You can have a. You can you can explore it on your own, um, and we'll put the code up um, uh, of this little sketch of these two sketches, if you like, um, on GitHub or something. Yeah, and, I think um, that'd be great. Yeah. And um, or, like worst come, like worst comes to worst, um, we can definitely. I could just do another stream where I go through your code and try yeah. to figure it out. Like how what's happening and how to do what, and yep. then um, compile a list of questions or something for you, <laughs> <laughs> um, and then uh, also so that I came late. Um, yeah, it's it's a little bit bad of a time for pretty much everybody except for people in Europe. <laughs> yeah, we, we, yeah, we're in the UK, so uh, yeah, um, it's. Yeah. But it was the most convenient time for the both of us. So. Yeah, sorry about that. Everyone's eating their breakfast. And <laughs> I don't even think. I don't even think uh, East Coast has East Coast even woken up yet. It's like. I don't know, eight or nine over there. Does this get, is this a recording? Is there a recording? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh, okay. I'll, I'll archive it on YouTube and then so people can come in and watch. But uh, no, it's not a virtual machine. It's just my laptop. Normal Mac running Sierra OS. Yeah. Uh, East Coast, best coast. Oh, I guess Love and PK is on East Coast. Uh, <laughs> Nice. Um, I'm San Francisco, West Coast, so yeah, okay. nobody's there's awake some, over there. Some, there's some beef. <laughs> uh, yeah, nobody's awake over there right now. Um, but thank you so, so much. No worries. Yeah, um, it was a really great time. Um, and then hopefully we'll have time sometime later this week um, to go through the rest of it. If not, um, I'm sure uh, one of my upcoming projects, so there was an ulterior motive to this, which is that yeah. uh, one of my, um, one of the data sketches that I have left, I want to learn processing for. Okay. So this yeah. is a, like a really great, like primer, yeah. beginning introduction. And then this way, hopefully, uh, uh, oh, have a great job, Lemon PK. <laughs> um, oh, Hi, Robert's daughter, Laura. <laughs> <laughs> Elsa never ran by. No, no. Elsa? <laughs> Come here a sec. But as She's you know, so it's, it's it's Sunday lunchtime here in the UK, and so and and uh, this is our kind of home studio. Um, oh, and so. can we show her a little? She has a little part in the studio too. Yeah. So. Oh. Uh, uh, so this is Elsa, my daughter, and so this is our. Uh, do you want to show them the desk? Yeah, so, so I think Mike should start his own channel, actually. Yeah, <laughs> so so Elsa's a, a, a coding fan too. She's got a like a Kano uh, or Kano oh, yeah. uh, computer over there, and so so in our little studio, we've got a couple of desks for Polly and I, and uh, and Elsa's desk over there. So. Um, oh so yeah, Snow so so says hi, go. Elsa, and so does Robert. <laughs> so someone, someone from America is saying hello. I think Robert is. I, ha I cannot remember where Robert is anymore. I think Robert is somewhere in the middle of Europe. <laughs> Robert. Oh, really? Oh, okay. <laughs> um, somewhere. So, yeah, family, it's... Sunday family coding club. Oh, yeah. Does she code? Elsa, do you code? Also, there's a yeah. lot of really cool things. You code. That's brilliant. Use... Well, and written instructions. On yeah. the computer. Yeah, it yeah. gives you little instructions, doesn't it? Yeah. You, you can draw um, shapes, and actually, you did you do a lot of coding in Minecraft, don't you? Yeah. yeah. Oh. So. Uh, yeah. And also make art. Make art. Yes, and you dance, and you play drums, sword fighting. What was the other thing you said? Oh, darts. Yeah. Oh no, d d dancing and you, you know. Um, Cartwheels, all that good stuff. <laughs> and gymnastics. And gymnastics, yeah. yeah. Super talented. <laughs> there you go.
Yeah. Oh, Robert is at the German Austrian Swiss border. <laughs> oh, okay. I had you. Uh, uh, had you in, in in the US or in my mind? So there you go. I think I think Robert was in the US for a little bit. Oh, okay. Yeah, Lemon PK. Good start on Java. Is Minecraft in Java? Um, I don't know actually. Yeah. <laughs> is it run on Java? I don't know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they've got a kind of a hack Minecraft thing where it's, it gives them. It's, it's nice. The the, the Cano um, computer then allows you to then hack Minecraft. It gives you the little instructions of what to do. Um, so uh, yeah, it's nice. It's a nice start. The Prince, uh, oh, Minecraft is pure Java. Oh, cool. cool. Excellent. Um, the Prince as in like the, yeah. so, oh, the proximity cool. cities. Uh, I got one. <laughs> I didn't open it though. So yeah, we generated these in processing um, uh, as a kind of a an after product from the, the animation that we made um, and then um, created different kind of uh, random positions of these. Um, Actually, I should have opened mine. <laughs> it was in such a oh, nice like. Oh no no! Don't leave leave it in there. Leave so it they, in there. Yeah, 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 <laughs> they're not in um, So yeah, we basically um, use processing to output different outputs as a PDF, and then combine those PDFs with a kind of a, a command line script to kind of um, use okay. it, put a template. Okay. Oh, we're oh. Losing. <laughs> Where are we going that way? <laughs> oh, there you go. Oh, so oh, oh, sorry, the, sorry. yeah, so these extra bits, the text bits, and the logos and everything. Uh, Go that way. You are selling these, right? Yeah, yeah and we, we will put these. Yeah, we've got a little shop, but they're not up there yet. But um, so yeah, so each it's basically digital printing. Um, we do have a link that we can share with like where you're selling it. Uh, not yet. I'll, not I'll, yet. I'll okay. Give you a, give you oh, but uh, uh, so for those that are joining, um, I uh, have some of the links. Let me uh, let me do this again so that you can get the links to everything. Yeah, so there's a link to that project, the animation, the, the animated version of that project, and um, I'll probably on that page put some links to the shop when we put the, the uh, prints up there. But um, yeah, it was not, it was nice. And so, Ripe Digital, who are a printing company in, um, I always think, think they're near Bristol, uh, Bristol and Bath area. Um, they've got this amazing printer, this HP Indigo oh. printer that prints white ink onto black card, uh, oh, black nice. um, or yeah. whatever color. Um, and so, but because it's digital, each one can be different. So we could send them a thousand Such different a variations, and nice they could print. Paper too. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. It's, it's all lovely. Um, yeah. So they do a great job. Um, and um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, still kind of. Uh, wait. Edit the command. So there is a space between what? Uh, is it something to do with the? Oh. Link, maybe? Okay. 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 Uh, I will look into that later. Uh, okay. But uh, thank you so much. No worries. Uh, that was super fun. Um, and then I will let you know how my processing adventures go. <laughs> um, I'm sure like the next step for me is kind of um, going through the documentation for mm. processing. Yeah, and there's uh, a reference there if you click the reference link there. Actually, yeah. That's, that's all the good stuff. That's that's where you're going to find all your kind of built-in. Wow. Things, yeah. What are the tutorials that you would recommend me like starting out on? Oh yeah, so this will show you Dan Dan Schiffman. So Dan Schiffman's kind of like I I, I owe everything to Dan Schiffman, um, uh, Frederick Van Hoot, uh, and Keith Peters. Pretty much they helped me with all the things. But Dan Schiffman's um, uh, with out the sea, I think. Um, if you type in um, W blood uh, war blood. <laughs> what blood? I don't like, know. I think I know that. Name. Yeah, he's Twitter. he's on Twitter. Yeah. Um, there, this this link. So that's Frederick's. Um, so he created this library called oh, Hemesh, wow. uh, which allows you to do things like that to the meshes, to three D meshes, um, and subdivide them and do all amazing stuff. So yeah, between um, Frederick's incredible support uh, for Hemesh and Dan Schiffman's um, brilliant. Tutorials. He's got a YouTube channel where he's um, coding train. I think co was... coding train. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think he's out of action at the moment because he fell off his bike. I think, which is really bad. Um, um, but I think he's okay. I think he's recovering. But we're all missing the uh, coding train, uh, regular weekly coding train. Um, but every you know everyone learns from 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 Dan. I think with with processing. Um, and he's just got he's covered everything. And he's got books. Um, the nature of code, but another book I would recommend, apart from all of Dan's stuff, is this book called Generative Design, um, and it's like a classic. It's like the kind of the the if you were to do a generative design degree, um, it's got kind wow. of got every sort of type of 
And someone actually on Twitter asked what were the kind of the core algorithms of kind of generative design and processes and things. This book has it covered. And there is a website, I think, uh, if you search for generative design and processing, maybe you'll find your way to the website and all the, um, um, the yeah, processing book. Um, oh no, the, mm, it's this book. Ah, oh, there's the website. This is a German so site, Generative Gestaltung. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's my terrible German. But, but it's the books there. Uh, you really should buy the book. It's great um, if you can still buy it. Um, and but all the code is there as well. So, and it's lots of stuff like using noise and um, setting up grids and pixel sampling and importing data and all that sort of good stuff. And it's yeah. Um, oh, uh, one last question. If I want to start processing, which language should I start it and where should I start? JavaScript or Java? I don't think it matters, to be honest. If you're more comfortable in JavaScript and you're gonna, you want to make, make things for the web, P5.js is great. Um, so there's two, what was a bit confusing for a while, there's a, there's a library called Processing.js, which is kind of the older version where they ported the Java directly to JavaScript, which is great. Um, but then they wanted to build P5.js as a more uh, a real, a better web citizen, if you like, and it, can, it allows you to um, control the DOM and that sort of thing. So, um, so you can create text boxes and buttons and all that sort of in the DOM properly. Um, so P5.js um, is great. Yeah, um, can you use Node with P5.js? Um, like more server side. Yeah, you can actually. We did some experiments with that. Um, Brendan Dawes did an experiment. He's got a tutorial oh. up on uh, years ago, a couple of years ago. He did some generated some headers for his Twitter feed, I think, with Node and P5.js. And but you you can do that, yeah, yeah using um, Phantom JS. Um, you know the, head, oh, yeah, headless, yeah, the headless thing. Um, so yeah, you can do. Um, oh, I love his work too. Yeah, Brendan uh, did, does amazing work. Yeah, again, again a, a hero. Um, but if you searched for Brendan Dawes and Phantom JS, you'll probably find that that tutorial. So just go through these tutorials. It's headless, headless canvas. Um, yeah, so oh. I would, yeah, go through the P five J. Yeah, the processing tutorials. You'd go to P five JS, which has probably got its own tutorials. Um, yeah, I saw those. Um, uh, Schiffman's YouTube channel, um, and then Brendan Dawes. Yeah, Pet Phantom JS. I'm sure bring up that tutorial as someone said there in the chat. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's Dawes. Um, D A W E S Dawes, as opposed to Dawns. Oh, and then there. Oh, there we go. There's a whole learning processing. <laughs> yeah, uh, Schiffman does this like um, every week um, and has done for wow. years. Wow, there's just tons of it. Um, so if you want to learn about particle system, in fact, my little particle system thing to to move those points around was based on Schiffman's code. So. Um, oh, uh, hello. Well, how on earth? Oh, is. <laughs> uh, oops! 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 No! Stop! Stop! Where's my mouse? <laughs> It uh, says, I liked Manion.com books, generative art. Uh, is this, um, uh, this is um, Matt Pearson's book. Yeah, I've um, got that one too. Matt Pearson is in Brighton. Actually, maybe we'll meet him this oh. week. Um, yeah, um, he wrote this book on, on generative art, and it, yeah, it's excellent. It's really good. Um, I, yeah, strongly recommend that as a kind of a, a quicker way into than this kind of more, <laughs> well no I mean there's lots of stuff in here but um, it's a really nicely written book it's, um, yeah and written um, yeah, yeah. Well. so yeah another good one good good call yeah great thank you so much um, the closest I came to particle system was making so that's cool um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's the same thing I mean you know but then instead of moving through you know if you can master those kind of vector maths of you know that things have a trajectory and a force is applying to them, then then you can start moving, do, doing other things with that. You know, so, so you know, snow is a good start. You know, <laughs> it's, it's awesome. I have not tried to do any of this, so I'm just really excited to see yeah, it. And then cool. hopefully, I can keep you updated on the progress. And yeah, yeah. um, I'll I'll actually be live coding that on this channel too. Um, so I'll probably I was I was waiting actually to do this with you so that I can get a basic intro into processing, yeah. teach myself a little bit more processing, yeah. and then I was gonna start um doing the data sketches live coding um on this channel working on that and that one is the topic is nature and um. I have some data from the Planet Earth 2 um, documentary series. Um, so that one, I think I started getting like what uh, animals were appearing, at what time, how many, if there were like, um, I, I actually, I don't think I wrote down how many, but like, um, 
if they were hunting or being hunted or mating yeah. or yeah. um so I'm, I'm thinking of trying to turn that into some sort of a just a generative art piece or yeah. like data art piece but so. sort of geo sort of geo located kind of you know sort of a you know map based thing or no or, no, 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 no no it's no, just okay, like right. something completely abstract that like well, you maybe look at um so Schiffman's book, The Nature of Code, uh -huh. um, is, is a really good one for kind of more natural um, kind of, uh, you know, algorithms like L systems for growing trees and that sort of thing. So so that might be quite a nice I think actually, uh, I don't know if you know Taylor, Taylor Bald, the Baldwin, I think. Uh, there we go. I think he mentioned that one too because he does a lot of these like... Oh yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah he also does a lot of kind of... He's been doing more three D things recently, recently, but uh, there's a uh, yeah, like a lot of. No, oh, nice, yeah. And he mentioned he definitely I think mentioned nature of code too. Yeah, it's it's another another good. There's so many things I need to read. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. <laughs> sorry, you're gonna be jogging in the rain. Bye bye, love you, Kiki. And actually, we need to go too. We need oh, to and eat. The phone's ringing. And okay, okay, okay. <laughs> All right, bye bye. Okay, bye. Thank you so much for joining. And thank you so much, Mike. No worries. Okay, this is where I figure out where. But there we go. Stop.